story time. But not here. We're going on a little adventure. Senator's Mansion in Cinema. You know, the reason I wanted to do this today, again, it's minus 16 and I'm like rushing to do this on my lunch hour, is today is the three year anniversary of when it happened. So, uh, I don't know, today just felt kind of special. You know, I, I thought about doing like uh, a blog post about it where I like write it out, but this is one of those stories I've told like a hundred times. Because um, it, it is so crazy. But yeah, I think, you know, using a video to tell it is probably appropriate given, you know, who it is and what the story's about. Um, so here we are. I think I've been struggling with like where to start this story because I mean really you could start this back in like high school when I got my first camera and like how important photography and, and you know making cool videos is um, but I think the best place to start this story is like early 2017 so we'll, we'll start there. I'm gonna be honest it's way colder than I thought it was and I have no idea why I didn't just stay home and do this where it's warm but okay we're here. Oh. Am I regretting leaving my nice warm home in the minus 16 to come here? Yeah, a little bit. I ripped my glove. And now my finger's all cold too. But we're here, so let's do it. Story time. So yeah, this, this story starts all the way back in like early 2017. Like I said, this could be a long part of the story, but I had just bought a Nikon D5100 and I was like, I'm getting back into photography. This is gonna be the best, I'm so excited. And then I dropped it. I dropped the camera and my 18 to 200 uh, and they were shattered, they were both broken. It was like a $1,700 bill to fix. And I was like, shoot, like I, I think I'm done then. Like I didn't have the money at the time to, to reinvest. And yeah, it was it was a real bummer. Like I I can only say that that was like one of the saddest periods. That that was just like a really sad period of time for me because I I was really excited to get back into it and I just dropped my camera. I am not gonna walk and talk because I will fall for sure. So yeah, at the time I was kind of like I guess I'm done. Like I I thought that was kind of it for photography or, or videography and me. Um, kind of the the journey was over before it started. At the time I worked at this university, I was meeting with a student who, he mentioned he was a photographer, we were talking about cameras and stuff like that, totally unrelated to the appointment we had. And uh, he was like, hey, have you heard of this guy, Peter McKinnon? And this was like 2017 again, you have to remember. So Peter McKinnon was like kind of just blown up. Like he wasn't kind of like the household Canadian YouTuber guy that he is now. He didn't have five million subs. I think he had like maybe 70, 80,000, I don't really remember. Um, and he showed me a video, he showed me the, uh, oh, it was like the, why, it was um, how to make cinematic B-roll, I think. Mm, we're talking about B-roll, what it is, what it ain't. And I remember being like, oh man, like this guy, like he's doing it, like that's exactly the kind of stuff that I really liked. I cannot tell you guys how cold it is, holy crap. So I watched Peter McKinnon back in 2017 and I just like fell in love with his content and like his approach and it kind of like ended up pulling me back in. So um, over like the period of three, four months of just like watching and uh, absorbing everything Peter McKinnon was putting out, I was like, I gotta do it. I gotta get back into it. So at the end of 2017, I was like, you know what? Like, I, t I just broke that camera. I'm gonna buy another one. And I'm gonna go all in this time. I'm gonna buy a nicer camera and I'm gonna really try to make a go of it. So I bought a used Nikon D750 and he had just done a video on the 50 mil, the 1.8, the nifty 50 and I bought one of those. And I was like, this is my setup. This is what I'm gonna do. Bought it. I was pumped. I was like, here we go. And like, to anyone who's ever kind of like been into photography, but like not been a photographer, there's this period of time where you like love photography, but you're bad at it. And so everything you make kind of sucks, but you're good enough and you have the eye for it 
that it just kind of makes you sad all the time. So I was kind of in, in that period of time. Just bought that cool camera, was loving Peter McKinnon, but I was like super disappointed in everything I made. It was bad, I was, I was a really bad photographer at the time. And so then that kind of put me in this like, spiral of like, did, did I make a dumb mistake? Like, should, should I just get out of it now? So anyways, I've been rambling in context. Here's like the crazy part of the story. For my position that I worked at the time, I traveled a lot, but I mainly traveled in BC. I'd actually, I'd actually never been to Ontario before. Through a series of like crazy events, the person who normally covers Ontario had to go on a medical leave and I had to take on her trips. And it was like crazy short notice. Like I think it was, uh, Thursday and I had to fly out to Toronto on the Saturday. It was, the turnaround was was dizzying, it was bananas. And so I remember being like, you know what, this is my time. I'm gonna bring my camera. You know, I see all of Peter's stuff in Toronto. I'm bringing my camera. I'm gonna go try to take cool Toronto photos just like Peter McKinnon does. Um, great idea. So hop on the plane, I travel to Ontario. I get there, I'm like kind of sick, not feeling super good. And you have to remember, this was not 2020 uh, pandemic times. If you were sick, you, you kind of just troopered through back then, um, which is so weird to think about now. Like I had a gnarly cold headache and I was like talking to people. I don't know, these are different times. Anyways, so at the, the, that specific day, it was a, a Sunday morning and I had a few student appointments all across kind of the GTA that I had to meet with, um, not in like the downtown Toronto area, but sort of up north a little bit further. I knew nothing about Ontario. I still don't really, to be honest. And so my first meeting was at this coffee shop uh, up near Newmarket, Ontario. Uh, it was a Sunday, so when I booked the meeting at the coffee shop, I didn't look at the store hours and the coffee shop was closed. So I ended up having to like last minute call the student, move a whole bunch of stuff around. We went a few blocks over. And when I was driving to that new coffee appointment, I saw that there was a used camera store. It was a Henry's camera. Sorry, my, sh my camera shut off because it's getting too cold. Uh, so I'll try to wrap this up. I've just had to move this appointment. Like we moved it honestly like three times to this other coffee shop. I noticed this camera store, um, Henry's camera, and I make this mental note. I'm like, I'm gonna stop there after. Cause like had my camera with me. I wanted to see what kind of gear they had. I go to my appointment. They end up canceling on me. So they didn't show up. So all of that part of the trip was for nothing. I didn't even need to come all the way up to the area that I was in. Didn't need to know that that store was there. So I go pop into that store. I'm talking to the owner, having a great chat. Um, he's like a super, super nice guy. And uh, so yeah, we talked for about 10 minutes and, uh, and then I, I had to poop. Um, so I had to go use the washroom and I didn't want to like, you know, tell him that. So I, I kind of like, you know, I think I was like, okay, I gotta go, like got an appointment or whatever. I leave. I uh, go do my business at like a Starbucks down the road or something like that. And then for whatever reason, I like finish up at the Starbucks um, doing my business. And uh, I'm like, I kind of want to go back. Like, I, I don't know why I did, but I ended up going back. So I go back, talking to the guy again a bit more, talking about photography. He's asking me what kind of like photos I want to do. And I and he said something like, he's like, oh, I noticed you have the, the gorilla pod in your backpack. Do you do you like vlogging or like any of that? And I was like, no, like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really comfortable talking to a camera as you guys can tell. And he's like, he's like, oh, fair enough, man. And I was like, if I'm being honest, like I, I just really love Peter McKinnon. Like he's, he's kind of the inspiration. So kind of just trying to make more content like Peter McKinnon does. And at that moment, that specific moment, the, the camera shop owner guy, he looks over my shoulder and he goes, well, damn, isn't that crazy? And I turn around and Peter McKinnon's right there. No lie. And I'm like, wait, what? And the camera shop owner guy goes, he's like, hey, Pete, like, how's it going, man? And it ends up being that that's like the camera store Peter McKinnon used to work at. It's the one that he visits in all of his videos. And I was like, holy shit, like, I'm like losing my mind. Cause like, I, you know, what are the odds of that, right? So I like totally fanboy out. I like say, I don't even know, I kind of blacked out. And I was like, man, Peter, like your content is so inspiring, blah, blah, blah. He's super nice about it. He's like, so chill. We have a little conversation about like photography and stuff like that. I tell him where I'm from. And then I go to leave and he's like, hey man, I, like, He's like, I, I don't mean to be weird, but like, do you want a photo? Like most fans want a photo. And I was like, oh shit. And I had even forgotten to ask him to take a photo. So um, yeah, we end up taking a photo together. He like shakes my hand. And the part that I love about this whole thing is that like 
you would think I'm lying. You would think that like, man, this story is like two bananas, right? Like that, there's no way that happened that way. The, so I tweeted afterwards, so I'll put it up here. I tweeted at Peter McKinnon, like, man, I was, I was only in Toronto for like, what, 24 hours, got to meet my hero, like blah, 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 how, how rad. Peter McKinnon retweets and he says like, thanks man, it was great to meet you, super nice dude. Um, and the owner of the camera store commented on Peter's tweet and he said, that timing was bananas. And to me that part's so important because that's where like, the fact that A, I shouldn't have been in that province, should not have been in that store, that area, I shouldn't have been anywhere near any of that. And to me, the fact that he, that that part is verifiable, that we were talking about him as he walked in, bananas, totally crazy. But that's the story, isn't that crazy? Like, I, like to, to me, I'm not, I'm not like a fate guy, okay? So I, I'm not trying to tell you like, you know, the forces in the cosmos led me there or whatever. I don't really believe that. But I, I do kind of believe that like sometimes the universe sends you a message that says like you're in the right place at the right time. And to me, so many things had to go wrong or right in order for myself and Peter McKinnon to be in that moment, in that time, in a headspace where I was like, Jesus, like am I doing the right thing? Like did I make this mistake with buying this camera? And it, it was at that time where I was like, you know what, like I'm, I'm doubling down, like I'm gonna get home, I'm gonna keep making pictures. That night I, I drove, I was staying like way up in, in the northern part of Toronto, I drove all the way down so I could take photos in downtown Toronto. Um, they ended up being like some of the coolest photos, I'll, I'll put some up here. I love them and I felt so cool while I was doing it. And honestly, like that meeting went on to like, like pump my tires or put gas in my tank for what ended up being like the next, the next three years, like to, to this moment now. And yeah, like I get emotional when I think about it because like it just, I don't know, it means a lot to me. Peter, like uh, if there's any chance you do ever see this video, um, thank you, man. And, and you know, thank you to all of the other content creators that have sort of begun, you know, emulating his style and inspiring each other. Uh, the whole thing's crazy. So, so anyways, I think I'm gonna end it there, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for watching. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't really know. It's kind of a random video, but uh, yeah, thanks so much. We'll see you guys on the next one.